So what is going on everybody, Fernando Silva here with another video and today I want to compare the app LumaFusion on the iPad Pro versus the new M1 MacBook Air. So as we all noticed and found out, the new M1 Max, so on the Mac Mini, MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, you're able to run some iPadOS and iOS applications. Not every single one, so don't go out looking for every single application because you're not going to find it. But one of the applications that is dual compatible with iPadOS, iOS and macOS is now LumaFusion. LumaFusion is the application that I use on a daily basis, probably more often than that, to get these videos edited for you and posted on YouTube. And I do that strictly on the iPad Pro. But then somebody on Twitter mentioned to me that I should make a video using LumaFusion on the M1 versus using LumaFusion on the iPad Pro. Now LumaFusion is built as a touch first video editor, right? It works very well with the Magic Keyboard as well, so I'm curious to know how it works on Mac OS as a regular application because it's still gonna be the iPad OS app just inside of Mac OS. And then another reason I was prompted to make this video is because I saw Olier, and I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, or Ultralinks, he posted a video on the M1 MacBook Air versus the iPad Pro. And he said that the M1 MacBook Air is by far the one that he would recommend the most. And I wanna let him know that not so fast, essentially, right? Not so fast, but I'm gonna do this in real time. I don't know what the outcome is gonna be. We're gonna compare everything live and let's get started with this video. So as you guys can see, I have LumaFusion running on both macOS, so the M1 MacBook Air over here, and then I have it running on the iPad, on the iPad Pro 2018 over here. And what I've done is I put together just a quick little test of some B-roll that I have here. It's about a total of, I wanna say 30 seconds on both sides. So if I move this over, you can see that the, the same exact. So in total, it's 32 seconds, and over here, it's also 32 seconds, 32.08 seconds. And what I wanna show you guys is, we're gonna test out a couple of things, right? The first thing I want to do is actually quitting out of the application because usually when I quit out of the application on the iPad Pro and then reopen that application, I'm still using the same exact file and I don't have to go in and open the work that I was doing before. So I'm going to quit out of LumaFusion on here. So quit out of everything. That's Apple Q LumaFusion on here. So as you guys, so as you guys can see, it's totally blank. And I'm going to open up LumaFusion on the Mac computer and the one, there's a couple ways to access it, right? You can access it through your launch pad down here and it should be right there as an iOS app and I'm gonna open them simultaneously. So I have it on both computers. Let's open them up together. The M1 seemed to have opened it up just a tad bit quicker and they're both on the exact same file that I was on before. So that is a beautiful thing to see. So, so far the M1 is opening it quicker. Now in terms of functionality, right? Because LumaFusion is an iPadOS application. It was not transformed into a native macOS application. It's just able to run now as an iPad app on the MacBook Pro, or on your MacBook Air, or any M1 device that you have. So what I wanna see is how it does in terms of fluidity, right? Because over here, if I just kick this over, it knows how to actually use my finger, use the inertia, use all the little touch in interfaces and APIs that Apple has grown over the last 13, 14 years with iOS and iPadOS. And that's what it's that's how it's used and then also with cursor support it took over that 13.4 cursor support where it now hovers and takes over all the different icons down here depending on where you're going so it kind of hovers over and then pulls towards all the buttons that you would want to use so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to play them both back i'm going to mute both of the devices and i'm going to see if it renders in real time so i'm playing them both they both seem to be running pretty smoothly no hiccups and now i'm also recording both of them are in 4k 30 FPS recorded on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, airdropped onto both of these devices, and then imported into LumaFusion. So the way that I actually access the files, the way that I import the files is exactly the same. On the M1, it seems to be rendering in real time, very, very smoothly. And as you guys can see, so far, so good. But now what I wanted to see was, so moving things around is a little bit different on LumaFusion on the MacBook, right? Because with, the, with LumaFusion, for instance, on LumaFusion, to move one of these timelines, if I wanna move it, all I have to do is, you have to hold it down and move it like so. I can do it with my mouse over here, move it around here. And then obviously you can't do that with your finger on the Mac, but I wanna see if it's a quick, so I wanna see if it's as quick and as responsive. So if I grab it and move it, it really isn't. So you have to grab it, hold it down for a second so it kind of recognizes that you're doing something and then move it. Because if I just try to quickly grab it and move it, it won't recognize it because it's not built for it. So I don't, I think it's kind of how iPadOS is built, how you have to maybe pause for a second so it recognizes that a finger is on it. And it's the same thing happening over here, but with the mouse as a finger, right? So if I hold it down, then it will move. If I move it up, it'll go up. And the application 
fundamentally and functionally is exactly the same. So all your filters, all your LUTs, the way you edit your video, the way you crop things, right? So if I want to dive in here, double click, it works to put me in here. If I double click on here, it works to bring me into the editing software, right? So, and then if I want to maybe make the image a little bit bigger on here, I can't. And look at me, I'm going with my fingers thinking I can zoom in because here I'm so used to zooming in like this, right? So here I would have to use the trackpad as the touch screen. So it does work in that respect. I can grab it, I can move it around. So overall, the functionality is actually a little bit better than I expected. Um, just from what I've heard, I heard it wasn't built perfectly for Mac OS and why would it be when there's so many other options on Mac OS to video edit it? But if you're a diehard LumaFusion person and you're coming from the iPad Pro, I think LumaFusion on Mac OS, it's a decent alternative to Final Cut Pro, let's say, especially from a price standpoint, because Final Cut Pro is $300, LumaFusion, depending on when you're getting it in sales, is anywhere from $20 to $40. And this runs circles around iMovie. So the last test that I really want to do is actually exporting these files. So I'm going to move this down. Let's get out of here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these, show you in real time how quickly they export and see who actually wins. So let's get into it. So I want to export it in the same exact video format. I'm going to do it as economy in terms of the video quality. So both of them are going to be about 77 megabytes. It seems exactly. So all I have to do is go up here, press them together, and away we go. So as everybody saw, the M1 MacBook running LumaFusion is actually not as bad as I anticipated. I thought it was going to be a little bit more wonky. I thought it was going to have a, little, a lot more hiccups in terms of functionality and using a trackpad exclusively to mimic a touch interface, right? It's not to say that LumaFusion on the iPad Pro, I use it exclusively with touch, because I don't. I use it all with the Magic Keyboard. I would say 80% of the work done on my videos is done with the keyboard and trackpad. And then if there's little, there's little moments where I, I try to use my fingers. As you guys saw, when I went to go pinch to zoom, that's when I start to use my fingers. If I need to do something quickly, then I'll go and use a touch screen. But most of it is done with the Magic Keyboard. So moving over to Mac OS in a MacBook Air, is really not that crazy of an idea. You just have to get used to the fact that A, it's not a touchscreen, and then that B, the trackpad sort of mimics a touchscreen, and that there's like the slightest delay, the slightest, slightest delay. Like if you're a first time LumaFusion user and you use it on Mac OS, I don't think you're gonna see anything, I don't think you're gonna notice that slight delay, but coming from LumaFusion on the iPad Pro to Mac OS, it does have a slight delay and that could be because the iPad Pro does have that ProMotion display and has that 120 hertz display which lowers latency by that much versus the MacBook which only has a 60 hertz display and it's not a touchscreen. So that could be a reason why and it's not really a software thing, more of a physical hardware aspect of the two devices. But like I said, overall I'm very impressed with LumaFusion on the Mac. I'm not going to go ahead and say that I'm going to start editing videos on LumaFusion on the M1 MacBook Air because I'm not. I'm an iPad Pro focused user and this video will be edited on my iPad Pro over here because you guys saw that even though it was by a little bit, the iPad Pro still was able to export the same exact video file that much quicker. I mean, it beat it by a couple seconds, but still it exported it quicker. And again, that was with a small 30 second sample size with 4K, 30 FPS. So I wonder how it would do with a long 10 minute 4K with a bunch of 60 and 30 FPS with slow-mo. I'm curious to see how the MacBook does versus the iPad Pro, but if the sample size says anything, the iPad Pro is gonna win every single time. But like I said, I'm overall impressed with the M1 MacBook Air. I'm sticking with my iPad Pro. The M1 MacBook Air is there strictly for work purposes, mostly to use LinkedIn in all honesty. And then the iPad Pro is every single thing else, everybody. That is why I love my iPad Pro. And it's just a productivity powerhouse. I'm gonna have a video coming up comparing both of these in full in a deep comparison because I want you guys to make informed decisions on making a purchase. And now if you do want your iPad Pro to be your laptop replacement with a Magic Keyboard, the MacBook Air is now the cheaper option. Especially when you bundle in, like I said, the Magic Keyboard and an Apple Pencil, the iPad Pro is gonna get a little bit more expensive, especially if you go with a brand new 2020 version. So there's gotta be ways to recommend the iPad Pro over the M1 MacBook Air, and this is one of the reasons why productivity and just optimize applications from the app store. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you answered a question that some of you guys had on Twitter. And if you guys have any other video ideas, Twitter's the best way to find me. In the comments is the second best way. And until next time guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out Paperlike.